In the fast-paced world of fashion, photographers are often looking at the work of other artists for creative spark, but when does that inspiration become imitation? Copying the works of masters has long been a tradition in the art world, young painters honing their technical skills by replicating each stroke, but with the rise of fashion photography in the 20th century, the same reverence and credit is not always given. To start, let's look at some fashion images that explicitly pay tribute to the great artists across different genres. For Vogue's June 1999 issue, Stephen Maisel uses Nicole Kidman to recreate several portraits by John Singer Sargent. Julianne Moore serves as muse to photographer Michael Thompson in this Vanity Fair tribute to La Grande Odalisque, the 1814 painting by Jean-Auguste Dominique en Grèce. It looks like Harper's Bazaar may have gotten wind of Julianne Moore's shoot for Vanity Fair, given this painting-inspired shoot for their May 2008 issue featuring artists like Modigliani and Degas. To round out the trinity of screen sirens with scarlet hair is Jessica Chastain by Annie Leibovitz, for Vogue's December 2013 issue, recreating paintings by Magritte and Klimt. In a shocking twist, daring to use non-ginger actresses, Harper's Bazaar's November 2017 issue featured a diverse cast of models for their artistic recreations, with Madame X making her third appearance in this video. For photographer Tim Walker, his photographs draw inspiration from fairy tales, ancient tapestries, but with such a distinct style, his resulting images take the seat of inspiration to a new place. For the December 2008 issue of British Vogue, the inspiration was the work of Roald Dahl, writer of beloved children's books like James and the Giant Peach, The BFG, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and many more. Taking us back much further in time, Walker uses the Bayeux Tapestry for his series titled Soldiers of Tomorrow. In another editorial, Walker pays tribute to the photographer Philippe Halsman's 1949 image Popcorn Nude, with his use of color enhancing the surrealist spirit. Annie Leibovitz is another photographer who draws heavily from fairy tales. Some of her most famous shoots include the December 2003 Alice in Wonderland, Natalia Vodinova on a journey through different worlds featuring fashion designers like Victor and Rolf, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Marc Jacobs, John Galliano, Stephen Jones and Christian Lacroix, and Tom Ford. Another fantasy story is her interpretation of The Wizard of Oz with Kira Knightley for Vogue's December 2005 issue. Taking us out of the realm of literature and into the world of art photography, the 2001 October issue of Vogue with Ben Stiller, Leibovitz was inspired by photographer Melvin Sokolsky's 1963 photo, On the Seine, of French model Simone Dayoncourt. Beyond drawing inspiration from other works that sit more comfortably in the art world, many are now directly referencing the works of other fashion photographers. It is not a surprise that many look to the three greatest fashion photographers of the 20th century for inspiration, Richard Avedon, Helmut Newton, and Irving Penn. Through the lens of Annie Leibovitz, the references of Irving Penn's photographs are clear but transformative, as is this Tim Walker tribute for W Magazine. A less subtle reference can be seen in Mario Testino's 2013 recreation of perhaps the most iconic cover taken by Irving Penn, Gene Patchett for the April 1950 issue of Vogue. The unfortunate exclusion of Gene Patchett's white scarf is more evidence of the discerning graphic talent of Penn and the dangers of comparing yourself to a visual perfectionist. The risque nature of Helmut Newton's work is a source of inspiration for many photographers, like the 1973 photo of Cheryl Teagues recreated for the Spring 2000 Miu Miu campaign by Vincent Peters. Giampaolo Sgura recreated Newton's 1976 photo of Bergstrom for the 2011 issue of Antidote with Anna de Reich. Going back to the pool, Patrick de Marchelier recreates a 1985 photo of Elizabeth Taylor for a Vanity Fair profile on Jennifer Lawrence. Also in that series with Jennifer Lawrence, de Marchelier takes inspiration from the incomparable Richard Avedon and his 1981 photo of Natasia Kinski. Other recreations of this image include Giampaolo Scura for Antidote magazine with Ashley Smith, 
Gavin Bond for Out Magazine with Andrea Page, Ali Madavi for Sorbet Magazine with Irina Sheikh, and Yu Tsai for Attitude Magazine UK with Niall DeMarco. Richard Avedon grew up admiring the photos of Martin Mukachi, one of the first photographers to capture a movement so explicitly, and in this photograph by Avedon for the September 1957 issue of Harper's Bazaar, Carmen del Orefice pays homage to Mukachi's 1934 puddle jumper. Avedon's impact on fashion photography is abundantly clear by how frequently he is replicated. This can be done so reverentially, like when Harper's Bazaar and Revlon call back to an early image Avedon shot for them. or when Vogue commissions a photographer like the great Peter Lindbergh to shoot a story in his honor. But the line between flattery and imitation gets very blurry with Stephen Meisel. Meisel, who at age 12 had his friends call modeling agencies pretending to be from Avedon studio in order to get access to high-profile models like Twiggy, he was doing Avedon while Avedon was still doing Avedon. For the 1994 CK1 fragrance campaign, Calvin Klein hired Stephen Meisel to recreate Avedon's famous 1969 photo of Andy Warhol and members of the factory, instead of hiring Avedon himself. Meisel has more recently made a copy of that copy from McQueen's spring-summer 2022 campaign, but this also happened with Versace. Avedon's campaigns for Gianni Versace are some of the most memorable in the fashion industry, and this fall-winter campaign by Maisel had the distinct Avedon look, down to the way the model's feet were positioned. Maisel later replicated this concept for a Roberto Cavalli campaign. Photographer Sebastian Kim, who was Avedon's assistant from 1996 to 2000, but then went on to assist Mizell, writes about the relationship between Avedon and Mizell in a section of Norma Stevens' book, Avedon, Something Personal, expressing that Dick felt strongly that Stephen had made his name by copying him. I would put it another way. Stephen had studied Dick about as hard as anybody could. When asked by the New York Times about what he thought of Mizell, Avedon replied dismissively, I'm not familiar with his serious work. It is hard to deny the beauty of Maisel's work, like this cover story of Fei Fei Soon, inspired by Avedon's work with China Machado, but the editorials that are stylistically his own end up being the most memorable, like this controversial editorial for Vogue Italia called Water and Oil with Kristen McManamy. Avedon's Versace has more recently been replicated by photography duo Mert and Marcus, down to the signature black frame from the film edges, a far cry from the saturated color grading the duo is known for, a look heavily influenced by Guy Bourdin. Giampaolo Sgura again turned to Avedon for creative direction in this editorial for Antidote magazine and cover for Vogue's Bang. Carlotta Guerrero's tribute to Avedon for the 37th issue of Metal Magazine recreated this Versace fall-winter 1994 campaign. If those goddesses in metallic gowns look familiar, Donatella Versace used this Avedon campaign as a runway tribute to her brother Gianni, featuring some of the supermodels of the 90s, Carla Bruni, Claudia Schiffer, Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, and Helena Christensen. Perhaps the most offensive of these imitations is by Gavin Bond, shooting an early edition Kim Kardashian for the tabloid Radar. It is easier to argue on the side of inspiration when the source material is extremely well known, like Avedon's 1981 photograph of beekeeper Ronald Fisher. 
photographer Dan Winters, an amateur beekeeper himself, pays tribute to Avedon for the UNESCO Guernan Bee Conservation Program, featuring Angelina Jolie. The team even managed to track down the same entomologist from the Avedon shoot, using the exact jar of Queen Pheromone on Angelina Jolie as Ronald Fisher. When asked how he thought Avedon would have reacted to the images, he told National Geographic, I like to think that if I were 97 years old and someone recreated one of my images, I would be deeply touched, so hopefully he would have thought the same. Beyond the three main photographers most often imitated, disgraced photographer Terry Richardson built a career passing off concepts created by photographers from the 1970s, like Guy Bourdin and David Bailey, as can be seen in these images he shot for Jimmy Choo and Aldo. When it comes to contemporaries drawing from each other, the ethics get more muddled. By no means was this editorial of Cara Delevingne by Merton Marcus for Love magazine the first time a model had been photographed in a bathtub. There are many examples with the same concept. But especially with using the same model and the images coming out within a few months of each other, this Tom Ford Black Orchid campaign by Mario Sorrenti is uncomfortably similar. On the flip side, Merton Marcus unabashedly copied Erwin Blumenfeld's 1943 photograph Lisette Behind Fluted Glass for Madonna's album cover. No strangers to a knockoff, they did so as well with photographer Jeff Bark with their story for Love Magazine, What Lies Beneath. The same can be said for this editorial of Otto Pierce by Paula Kudaki for Hercules Magazine, clearly the inspiration of Chema Yeste's editorial of Carmen Pedaru for L'Express Style. Recreating the shoot with a woman doesn't quite meet the standard of creativity, especially with Yeste's editorial coming out only a few months after Kudaki's. It is also a peculiar choice when a luxury brand references an image from another competing brand, like Dolce & Gabbana's eyewear campaign by Mariano Vivanco with David Gandhi, recreating the 1971 fragrance campaign of Yves Saint Laurent by Jean-Luc Sif. In comparing the two images, you must understand the context of how scandalous it was to feature the nude couturier at a time where his contemporaries like Karl Lagerfeld de Chloé were still going to work in three-piece suits, and both designers catering to extremely wealthy conservative women. The photo of Gandhi is still beautiful, but the muscular Adonis doesn't quite have the same danger as the original photo. When it comes to the debate of inspiration versus imitation, we would be remiss if we did not feature the re-photographer himself, Tyler Shields. When asked what inspires him by journalist Mila Pantovich, Shields replied, I just love to show people the way I see the world. It's important for me to explore the things that I see and create inspiration from the world around me. I don't look to other artists, just the world. In a different interview, Shields was asked if Terry Richardson is an inspiration and answered, To be honest, I don't look at other people's work. I only know who Terry is because people have asked me if I like his work. Tyler Shields is by no means the only photographer mimicking Terry Richardson's signature style of a glossy subject in front of a white background. Magnus Unar comes to mind as another, but Shields replicates photographers with entirely different viewpoints from one shoot to the next. Patty Johnson, art critic and founder of Art F City, told Vice Magazine's Jamie Lee Tate that in her opinion, Shields' copying of others' work was not the biggest problem with his photographs. The issue with the work of Tyler Shields isn't so much that he's copying so many artists' work, though his shouldn't be an artistic model to aspire to, but that his appropriations replace the unique vision of the original with cheap ploys of shock or nostalgia. Take the Sally Mann ripoff. You never forget the original for the child's defiant gaze while holding a cigarette. She's not an adult, but she's at the stage where you begin to see who she will become emerge. And in that photo, it seems almost a little too early. With Shields's, there's no authenticity to the photograph. It's staged from beginning to end, so what you get is a child striking a pose with two women in the background gazing sexily at the camera. Are they what she is to become, or are they just ornaments for the photo? Either way, Shields takes what began as an incredibly haunting photograph and turns it into an art postcard. I can't think of a dumber, more offensive interpretation of the original piece. Although photographers tend not to speak out when they find their work being replicated, Henry Lutweiler took to Instagram to call out Shields after Hasselblad and Naunus began to promote the copy. I felt it was necessary to defend my work, and I did. 
Shields did not respond to Lutweiler. What bothered Lutweiler even more was the seemingly false backstory of his copy posted by Shields. I first tried to do the photo in 2009 and was not happy with the results, so I shelved it and then in 2011 I tried it again. And again I was unhappy, so I let the idea go for a while hoping that it would come back around again. Every time I would meet a ballerina, I would ask to see her feet. In 2014, while shooting another ballet project, I finally met someone who I thought would be able to introduce me to the right person to execute it exactly how I wanted. One of the things I realized when I finally got it after six years of trying was shooting it on a Hasselblad, took it to another level, and waiting six years was worth it. Lutweiler told Weiss, He has mentioned that it has taken him years to create this image, but an image like this is documentary, not staged, and should not be staged. The picture I took actually happened while I was working backstage on a book for the New York City Ballet. Those are real ballerina feet, and that is what they looked like after a performance. It was a fairly spontaneous shot in the end. It would be nice and easy if the line between inspiration and imitation was clear, binary, but as with most things, it lives in the gray rather than the black and white. As more time passes, art becomes part of the public domain, giving young artists the space to reinterpret older works with a fresh perspective, but it is important to give credit where credit is due.